video show through of a preset 33U. I will start from the outside, go my work my way into the inside, and stop and show you everything along the way. Pop in the hood. If I go out of focus, I'm sorry. Under the hood, washer fluid, brake fluid, oil dipstick, power steering fluid, coolant, transmission dipstick. Add your oil. Now, to add the oil, you have to go up. Same with the brake. Chassis batteries up front. The house battery is separate. Decent lights on the front of this. Fog lights as well. Front license plate holder, in case you ever need it. Front tires as well as rear tires are all 82 pounds PSI. Uh, check that periodically throughout your trip and should be pretty good left and right side cameras left side camera here top mirror is power as well as heated the bottom mirror is not I will stop and open up every compartment door along the way Nothing huge, but storage. Locked as well. Everything has the same key on it. Generator on this one is a Cummins Zone in RV Quiet Gas 5500. That means 5500 watts. Pull from the top, pull straight off. Pretty simple to use. You have oil dipstick here, so you unscrew this, it comes right out. If you're going to do any of your own oil changes or maintenance on this one, you want to change your oil for the first time at 50 hours, 5 0. Any oil and every oil change after that is going to be about 150 to 200 hours. To drain the oil, you have oil cockpits here, it'll drain it underneath. Oil filter is accessible from underneath, which is kind of visible from here. <clears throat> air filter as well. You want if you get into a lot of arid areas, Arizona, of course, a lot of sand. Check that, clean it out. Um, you can start and stop it from outside. You don't have to. You can stop and start from inside. But the important thing here is. The breakers. It's just like your household breakers. They're both set on right now. In the off position, the generator will run and you'll never notice it until you're like, hey, I want to use my microwave or my AC. If you ever have a problem, you're like, hey, it was running yesterday, it's not running today, always come out here and check these first. Again, you can start and stop it out here. Push and hold down to prime it. Light will turn on. You'll hear some clicking sounds. Not that you can hear it right now. And then push up to start it. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll start it inside so you can hear it. But that's the basic rundown of this generator. Let's do an oil change on it. It has part numbers. Oh. Hey, look, everything I just set for you. Put the cover back on. Just a little groove that fits in a slot there. And then push, and it slides right into place, as well as your exhaust for the generator. A little more storage. 
this one is a pass through this opens on the other side so if you want to put a kayak or something in here you could or just a larger ladder lights everywhere there is one on the other side as well that we can't see at the moment Another one that's a pass through. We have a starter kit for you. The starter kit kit includes a 25 foot safe drinking hose, a 10 foot sewage hose, 15 drop-ins for your black tank. Uh, every time you empty your black tank, you want to drop one of those in and a couple gallons of water. Four rolls of RV marine toilet paper. That's pretty much a must. And then a 30 amp to a 15 amp adapter, as well as a water pressure regulator. So if you already got a water pressure regulator, a lot of people do, you might want to return it and get one for free. Okay, this section I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit because I have to go between three different compartments here. Just to go through this section. So just like you have a sewage hose there. This one comes equipped with a macerator. So basically, this is your sewer hose. Macerator, and then, not that I can get to see it very well. Okay, so macerator here, you have your black tank and you have your gray tank. Both right now are closed. Then you have black tank valve, gray tank valve. I'm sorry. Those all drain into the macerator and then from the macerator out to this hose out here. To turn on the macerator, we'll have to go to the wet bay. wet bay on this one. Let's try not to focus on that yet. Light as well. So we were just talking about the macerator. Macerator switch. Turn it on. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is running right now. What we'd want to do right there is make sure this end is in where you're dumping it to. And the macerator's on, always pull the black handle first and then pull the gray handle. Pull the black handle away until you stop hearing it making different sounds. You'll hear the difference when it has water running through it when it doesn't. And then when that's clear, and then pull the gray handle. Basically clear any excess waste out of the hose. A little more sanitary. Then when that's all said and done, you go back and you turn off the switch. It's really hard to watch this video. All right, rear tires are dualies. So you have tire in the rear, tire in the front. Again, 82 PSI for these. And that's Jayco's recommendation for it, for the best ride. You have an air chuck here to fill the back tire. And then not. And then air chuck there for the front tire. This is a false hubcap. You'll find a couple of these lugs here that have a little groove in them. Right there. That one doesn't have it, but this one does. Any of those like that are going to be the ones you loosen it up with and it pops right off pretty simply. I kind of like the slide out covers on these. I really like the decal. Nice and shiny. Alright, fun stuff. 
I get a lot of questions on these. I get a lot of responses. Um, our brain likes to complicate it. It is actually a very simple situation. You have a whole bunch of pictures that have effects on each one of them. So, for example, if we're hooked up right now, like I have city water hooked up and running into the system, we're gonna have it hooked, or a, these four knobs down here turned the way it wants us to go. So the city water, white and up and down, blue left and right, red up and down, green left and right. Now if I wanted to fill your tank, I would just turn the blue down. I can hear that it's filling your tank right now. There is a gauge inside to tell you how full the tank is and you'll be able to monitor that or you just wait until it overflows on the outside. You'll see it running underneath. It won't damage anything but you don't want to do it too often. Now to pull, pull from the tank, we're going to call it dry camping. So basically everything except for the green one goes up. Winterize, that actually bypasses your water heater as well. So everything will be left and right all the way through. Sanitizer tank basically just pulls uh, from here from your hose into the tank so you can take a shorter hose take a bucket of water and some little bit of bleach put it in the tank make sure it gets sloshed around a little bit and then run it through your system do not drink that water and be very vigilant on that and that's pretty much it if you can read the picture you can figure out how those valves work you also have a water pump here put the water pump on there is a light that turns on, there's one here, there's another switch inside. Light switch. Black tank flush. Black tank flush is going to run to your black tank. It's basically an upside down sprinkler that sprays the sides of your tanks and, the, and runs, can run through your macerator big thing with this is do not leave the tank unattended or make sure you're emptying your black tank while it's running or else you will overflow and go to your roof or your toilet and then throughout the whole house that's just not a good thing outside shower quick connect on it, it does come with its own hose quick connect push it in Spray nozzle. Oh no. There's some hot water on. So in case you ever get the poo on you or you know the dog would decide to roll in the mud. Yeah, I should have let me relieve the pressure first. I don't like to leave water in the hose. I don't like a lot of water in anything if it's storing. Mostly because uh, water gets stagnant, stinks, and it starts to eat at things. <clears throat> so, pretty much there. You have a satellite in inlet and a cable inlet. So if you get to a park that has a cable hookup, you can bring your own coax and you can hook into their cable and run it from here. The same if you ever decide to get a uh, satellite dish or a tailgater, you can hook it up here and then run it to your house. Here's a fun one. So we were just talking about the black tank, the black tank flush. Should have covered this then. So in this coach you have two black tanks, one in the front one in the rear because you have two bathrooms. So, the up is going to be your main tank, and forward is going to be your back tank. So you can flush both tanks. You have a whole house water filter in here. There is no filter in it right now, but it is in the house, it is brand new. 
We don't like to leave them in. There's a wrench in there as well for it. Three low point drains. That's going to be for if you're just storing it for a short period of time. You can empty out any excess water you have inside. And one is for the freshwater tank. And a little bit of storage in here so you can put hoses. Anything you really want. Sorry about the broken up video, I keep getting interrupted. From the wet bay, oh, paper towel holder. All right, so from behind the wet bay, just another small storage compartment. It's not a pass through, light as well. Oh, those LEDs are bright. Unleaded fuel. You know how to put gas in your vehicle. Uh, they say regular unleaded, that'd be fine. You don't have to use premium. This one actually tells you gray water holding tank, black holding tank. This is for your rear bathroom. Again, back to the same concept. I ran a little bit of water through it earlier, so you're going to see a little bit of water underneath it. But black tank on the right, gray tank on the left. It's a black handle and a gray handle. It's kind of hard to see in the video. Always empty the black first. Outside furnace. Outside furnace. Exhaust for your furnace. Basically, it says hot. Don't touch it. It gets hot. You have a 50 amp cord here. Right now it is plugged into 50 amp. It's about 25 foot cord. Uh, if you feel like you're going to be further away than 25 feet, you know, you can always get an extension cord for these. The hole down there is so you can run it out underneath and close this door and lock it. Rear side of the coach. LED lights all the way around. Seven way and a four way plugs. So if you ever want to tow, 5,000 pound towing capacity, 500 pound tongue weight. There it is. Put seven way, four way. One of my favorite touches. Rear view camera on this. It will, you can either run it all the time or it just when you're backing up. It will always turn on when you're backing up. Truma water heater. It is a tankless water heater. Again, looks more complicated than it is. Basically, the only thing you're ever going to have to worry about is this section here, which is your drain plug. Uh, I have pressure on the system. I don't want to open that right now. Basically, pop this up, and this folds down, the whole plug comes out. On this, outside of that, the only other thing you're going to have to worry about is your power on and on power, and then off. Yeah, it seems a little weird, right? So, the reason why this is, they made it so you can have two different things. This one just provides this system. Up is going to be what they call eco. Down is comfort. Basically, not that you can really see it, there is a one liter tank right there. Comfort is going to keep that one liter tank at a good temperature all the time. You'll go through a little more propane, but less water. If you put it in eco, it's going to not fill it or keep that tank warm. It's going to take a little longer for your hot water to get to you, but you're going to use less propane. So I guess there's a give and take there either way.
low point drain. A little bit of storage. This is a decent size. Low point drain on that one. That is going to be for uh, the rear of the system, not not the front system. Solar prep. So if you ever decide to let's see if I get to focus. So solar prep. So if you ever decide to put solar panels on the roof, you can. Uh, it is already pre-wired for it. There's attachments on the roof. You'll be able to get it inside. Uh, they work pretty well. So if you're going to do a lot of dry camping or boondocking, it's perfect for that. We'll move on to the next one. Slide out, awning. A little bit more to go. Alright, so one thing you're going to notice on this one is there is no lock. The reason why there's no lock, it is illegal to put a lock on the propane tank. In here, you're going to see, well, the propane tank. All the way on or all the way off, never in between. That looks a little fun, doesn't it? This is your hydraulic jacks, or hydraulic pump for your jacks, leveling jacks. There is, it's really hard to see in the video. You can kind of see the level on that one, it's just below the plug. You want to keep it there. Always check it when the jacks are up, not when the jacks are down. If you check them when you're down, you're going to fill it up. You're going to overflow when you bring the jacks up. Just like the chassis battery, the house batteries are separate. But your alternator will charge these periodically. What I mean by periodically, about 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. And it will charge while you're traveling. whole bunch of electrical stuff that uh, I'm not going to get into in this video. But it is a full propane tank. Same thing with this tire. There is a fill port there as well as this one's a little different, it's right below it. They usually right across from each other. Second furnace. Again, don't touch it, it gets hot. This is the back of the fridge. You open that occasionally. How you open that is just twist the knobs here. why I'm opening this is so you know that it does come off and you want to get in there and clean out any debris that may occur during your camping trips. Look at this, that pass through. Here's a fun one. Outside TV. There it is. Decent problem is you see a lot of glare with them. Outside plug, just in case you want to hook up a coffee pot. The TV itself does come out, does swing. I keep forgetting I'm videoing.
outside stereo, which you can use as a sound bar for these speakers here through the from the TV. And it is radio. Also throw a DVD in here if you want to watch a DVD outside on this TV. Bluetooth enabled as well, so you can actually hook up your phone, listen to whatever you want to. If you want to listen to your favorite podcast, whatnot. And that gets harder to see. USB is and coax as well in case you want to use a thumb drive or auxiliary cord. Sorry, it has not been cleaned yet. But not least, the last storage compartment. Pretty decent size, mostly for tools or I don't know. I guess a case of beer might fit in there. All right, awning, fridge or stove, hood, vent. Yeah, I'm six foot three and I still can't reach that, so you might need another ladder. You do have to open and close that one as you see fit or need. If you have to open it because you get a smoky bacon or something inside. There are little tabs that I can't quite get in the camera. But you have to open and close that. Uh, you could leave it open, just don't leave it open in the winter. Keyless entry on your front door. Pretty simple here. The code that comes with these stock and every unit that has this keypad on its own. The entry code is going to be 3715, then BP. Door is locked. So after that, if I were to actually just pull on the door and not push back on the door, three, seven, one, five, that will not unlock now. What I need to do is put, put a little bit of, put a little bit of uh, force on the door again so it click, clicks in and then try it again. Oh, this is hard to go through a camera. Power step came out with the door opening. You can turn that off, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But the door, the steps go by the screen door, not the main door. Turn that off, just inside the door, it says power step on it. Pretty simple, right? On is gonna go out, in and out, off, as I keep it in, or out. Alright, I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. So the code on this one, you can change the code yourself. On the back of this panel, there are two Phillips screws, one there, one there. There are four AA batteries on the back of this. Uh, during the winter, if you're going to stay in Michigan or something cold climate, make sure you remove the batteries before you store it. Uh, batteries don't like cold especially double A's. How to change the code on that is on the back of this panel. So it's fairly simple. You hold a couple buttons for a couple seconds and then it'll beep and then you go through the code you want and then press another button and it'll be set. Fairly simple. Oh look, something I have to fix. No, no. All right, just inside the door. I close it up because it's getting a lot of glare inside. Just inside the door. You have a switch that's main power. 
the main power. Flip it on, flip it off. Lights turned off. I'm going to push the button again. All the lights are going to turn on. <clears throat> that is a battery disconnect. It's going to disconnect your power from basically the whole coach. Uh, you'll still have little things going. Um, like your LP detector will still pull draw 12 volts. So you keep that in mind. But you want it on in order for it to charge. Whether you're plugged in or you're going down the road, that main power has to be on. Basically, the only time you use it is during storage. Awning light. That didn't pop up at all. That's all right. Awning in, awning out. Out. Oh, it's a new coach. <clears throat> Some, whoa. Sometimes they like to get sticky. Is that awning light? If you look at this awning from a distance, you'll see that it's tilted. How you tilt that is actually easier to do when it's in, but I'm going to try to attempt doing it. Well, yeah, I'll try to attempt it doing it one handed. To change the pitch of the awning there are, if you've ever had crutches you're familiar with this all well, this is going to be really hard to do one-handed there we go push it in oh yeah that's impossible to do one-handed it didn't move and it's easier to do when the awning is in <clears throat> 